You'll be the life of the party. Huh. Huh. Yeah. 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 Well, all right. Well, all right. Huh. Where you from, Courage? Tell them why I die. The location where danger's hanging, ain't got crime watch. And if you close, 10 seconds could get you nine shots. I ain't talking about the flu, uh, huh. Where you from, Courage? Tell them why I die. A location where danger's hanging, ain't got crime watch. And if you close, 10 seconds could get you nine shots. And I ain't talking about the flu. People try to get away, they take a train of flu But no amount of distance change the pain that you been through You take yourself up out the dock, can't take the dot up out of you I'm trying to change my shoes, they don't fit cause they've been used Yeah. Woo! I'm excited man I got a, the man, the myth, the legend <laughs> with me today And we got him on video last time, I just had the audio But this time you can see how beautiful his face is and how wonderful he is. And so I'm excited to have him back. It's my boy, <laughs> Trey Cop, man. And you're on the ladder. Yes. Um, my second episode of Black History Month, second episode of 2020. Yep. And so my idea for this month was to uh, try to bring on some people that I consider black heroes. Some people that I consider are making history currently. Um, and I thought um, there's no one that I think is going to go down more in history that I know. And my man's Trey Cop. Oh, snap. Um, All right. Like, bro, like, honestly, hey. man, like, your talent's through the roof. Your, your drive is through the roof. And I've seen you um, take lead and turn it into gold. I've seen, I've seen you do that, man. Yeah. And so I believe in you. And so I want my, I think my people would love to have you. And so we're going we're gonna to chop it up. We're going to talk more about you. All right. Let's do it. So last time we talked, we talked about chasing your dream. We talked about betting on yourself. Yeah. Um, and we talked about how that was going with you. Yeah. And so now that was about six, seven months ago. I don't know if you know that. Jeez. So that, that the time flies. Yeah. Bro. And you're at a, you're, you have progressed mm -hmm. in those six, seven months. So what are you up to now? Like, let, let's, so you go, yeah, you go ahead. First of all, all right. introduce yourself. Or where can people find you? You can find me um, on anywhere online through Bobby C. That's B O B B E H C. Mm -hmm. Bobby C. That's my that's my name that I'm going by when I do my entertainment mm -hmm. or whatnot. But you can, I mean, you can find me on YouTube. Honestly, I mean, I got okay. a lot of different clips, different uh, things that I was a part of, different plays, short films, commercials, even. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But uh, Instagram is what I'm mainly on. If yeah. I'm talking social media. You be media. on the ground. Um, that's the story what I'm be lit on. every day. Yep, I gotta, I gotta keep on making commercials because yeah. I mean that's really all Instagram. It, it is, it is. It's a bunch of commercials. So, <laughs> hey, I might as well look at mine real quick. <laughs> and then I got um, <clears throat> it's, I mean uh, email. That's it. I only do email and okay. Instagram for right now. Okay, that's fun. I bought a website, but I just never. Hmm. Yeah, I bought a website. It's I just out there. It's the there. Website. Yeah, I just never did nothing with it. Like, this I, is mine. I paid to get it all put together uh -huh. and everything, and I just. I remember we was talking about the, the, you was talking to the developer, yeah, like, a black lady, right? Yep. Yeah, I remember that, and it's just like it's just there. It's just there. You know, but Instagram is not working. <laughs> Instagram is working just fine. Instagram free. It is, you free. know, and then they do all the updates. So yeah, that's they, so you don't got to go back and do that. It's like, hey, here's some new stuff. Yeah, and you be like, cool, I need that. <laughs> got you. I got you. Yep. Um, and so. Last time we talked about betting yourself, we talked, you talked a lot about theater. Yeah. What are you currently doing right now in the theater realm? Okay, so as far as theater goes, I'm working a lot with students. Mm -hmm. um, I have a class that I actually this is for this is the school that I'm working. Okay, with, okay, um, oh, Allen that, Village. Okay, okay. Uh, we have what's called a program called Drama Time that we take in, and basically we just we teach the kids everything about speech theater. Um, etiquette as far as standing up on stage, using projection with your voice, using your body as an instrument, as a tool to convey a message and tell a story. Yeah. So the, the, working with the high schoolers is what I'm doing in theater now, but also I have my own classes that I teach uh, specific it's called Tribe University. Yeah, yeah. And, Shout out um, to the Tribe. Yeah, tri Tribe. Shout Come out on to now. the Tribe, man. Uh, it's called Tribe University, and that was made by Tribe U. Uh, we came together and wanted to make an outlet for people who want to be creative or mm -hmm. speak or, you know, they call themselves extra or goofy or whatever. Yeah. I'm looking for those yeah. people, those students, those children, all of those people. We come here and we can do that together in a vulnerable, safe place for yeah. love. Uh, so I do those classes over at the Black Box on Truth. Yeah. Um, but I will come to you. 
Um, also, okay. that, I do, that can travel. Yeah, oh yeah, that's okay. easy. Ah, um, ah. I also do uh, this travel and school show. Oh, I, I signed back up. Uh, ah. I got back in with them. So okay, I'm okay. working with this okay. travel and school okay. show. We go to these middle that schools. That makes me happy. So uh, we got rid it. of the middleman. We got rid of the white okay, person. Okay, good. You know. Hey, it is what it is. You know, we, we know we are here. We good. We good. We had to get rid of the yeah. producers and let the people who started know, the show yeah. run the show. Yeah. So. Okay, so you still, so you're doing that? Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't sign the contract until, until I had yeah. the support and you that I was And actors for. more. So it was producers. good. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. Yeah. This is the show now. So, yeah, we uh, travel around USD 500. We go to the different middle schools and mm -hmm. we tell a show. This month, we're doing it about hip hop. Okay. Um, and it was written by a lady named Cynthia Hardiman and a woman named MC Storm. Okay. They came together, wrote a beautiful little story about an old person understanding hip hop versus a younger person understanding of hip hop. Yeah. And how, you know, it's so much more than just putting lyrics to a beat or whatever it it's like yeah. it's really deep so mm -hmm. that's what that play goes into also come on <laughs> man i was up doing, this uh, i'm talking about he working <laughs> doing a raisin in the sun at yeah. the casey melton pot theater yeah that'll be running february 14th through the 29th um weekend show so usually we start the shows on thursday running through sunday mm -hmm. so y'all can come out and ch check us man me my partner crystal coppage y'all yeah. will see us doing our thing it's it's a dope show if you've never seen Raising the Sun, you're going to love it. If you have seen it, you're going to love it because the way that we do it. It's different. Man, it's Put just all so... all spins on it. It's true to the human. Gotcha. It's true to the gotcha. humanity of the story and not so much acting. And, gotcha. Uh, you know. So it's not a lot of extra stuff. It's no, just like y'all living yeah. on stage. Yes. Yes. Okay. And the way the stage like is set that. up. You know, y'all will see because y'all are gonna come. Uh huh. They they get um, tickets now. Yeah. <laughs> drop the link in the in the in the description. The way the stage. And they're gonna they're gonna go get their tickets. My man, that's all I need. Yeah. Come on out. Yeah. So, because we honestly, I want to do more things than Wanda. Yeah. We'll and I will. We're gonna get um, there. But gonna get you know, there. right now KCMO is really supporting the arts. Mm -hmm. KCMO is really it is going hard for them and uh I mean they show up to the shows and whatnot. People always say that, you know, Kansas don't do this, Kansas don't, but nah Kansas is very supportive. We just yeah. find ourselves having to travel to, to Missouri, Missouri yeah. to support some and, and some of it's like people don't realize how small Wanda is. Yes. Like it is the smallest county in yes. the state of Kansas. Yes. It feel big to people from Wanda because we don't go nowhere. <laughs> but like Wanda is tiny. Yeah. And so it moves, the speed of Wanda moves more like a town yeah. than a city. Well, Kansas City, Missouri is, is a big city. And so stuff moves yeah, in Kansas City, Missouri. Yes. It, and like, even so, I was talking to my wife, like, even with the, with the Chiefs winning, mm -hmm. like, Chiefs winning, Royals winning, Sporter KC won it all in the last decade, yes. last 10 years. True. Um, money is coming to Kansas City. Like, people don't realize how big sports have a role in business and things like that. But like money is they've been, coming. They've been getting ready. Yeah, yeah. I feel like since a little bit before the uh, Royals won, yeah. like they have been Stuff already. The, yeah, it, it was it was snowballing. They was treating so, it like this was a championship town. And which, yeah, we are. Congratulations, Thank by the way. Sir. We um, are. Um, but that's that's true. <laughs> one more thing we're doing. Yeah, well, not one more. It's a lot more. But another thing that I mm -hmm. want to make sure that I let y'all know we're doing. Yeah, Church of Father World. Yeah, um, we got a comedy yeah. event coming up on the twenty eighth. Yeah, it is Black. People. So this is happening in Wyandotte County, Wanda. and this is black people supporting a black business. We, we inside of this uh, a restaurant, yeah, a bar, elevate bar and elevate grill. Bar and uh -huh. grill. We put together this comedy show that we do. It's clean comedy. Yeah. Uh, we call it Church of Father World because we want to make it churchy enough for you know the church folks, mm -hmm. but also worldly enough to where the worldly people look at the church folks and be like, oh, that's kind of funny. Yeah. You know, and then the church people look at the worldly stuff like, oh, that, okay, that's kind of funny. You know, that's so bad. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's what we do. We bring comedians in, but we have a group called You People. Coming. I'm, I'm so excited. And it's improv. It's an improv group. I'm so man. excited, bro. Man, they are all black improv group. Oh, uh, like, that's yeah. that's different. Yes. Improv. The improv world is. Is anything but all black. Oh, I know. Yeah. And just to be able to be a part of the time where improv is taking on, you know, we, we getting it now. We want mm -hmm. it now. When I was a kid, we had Wild and Out to yeah. watch. Yeah. You know, and it was like, I wanted to be on that show, but now I'm making, I'm making those shows. Yeah. So, yeah, man, that's, that's, that's the stuff we got going on, man. That's what I got cooking. Who's, who got keys to your door? That's probably my wife. Oh, okay. That's probably my wife. And, I hope know, it is. 
Somebody nope. just out there jiggling. Okay, keys. yeah, that happens. <laughs> um, hey, we live, baby. No, yeah. that's, that happens. Okay, so uh, I'm following, I'm tracking where we're going with this. And you, my question is, so as you're as you're diving deeper, deeper into theater, deeper and deeper into acting, mm -hmm. um, is it is everything a win? Because I think. For me, like I think when some people think about like getting into their passion, they're like every they they see people who are successful, mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, when you started, you must have always been successful, right? And right. so like as you as you're going through this, has everything been a win? Has every play you you've auditioned for you got? Have every script you wrote? Is it all being produced into Hollywood films right now? Like talk me through that process and how you're able to uh, persevere and stay afloat with with keeping your dream alive. Um. I think that because I try to be grateful, I try to be appreciative of whatever it looks like, whatever's going on, I'm mm -hmm. very appreciative. Yeah. So when I first started, I wanted to go to the schools and tell stories. Yeah. Um, so I went to the schools and just read books to the kid and I, I was remember. grateful that I was able to do that. I was grateful that I was able to have time in my day to go do something that I wanted to do mm -hmm. to contribute to what was going on. Um, yeah. So I went to the you know the elementary schools in Wandar County, yeah. and I felt good about it. I let myself feel good about mm -hmm. it. And then I told you other didn't people, minimize that. No, because so for some people it's like ah, this ain't enough. Right. Like, you want because you well you want to get paid for that. Right. No, and that's the thing. It's like when you're doing it for the love and you add value to whatever wherever you are, mm -hmm. you're, the money's going to come to you because you are valuable. Um, and as long as you practice, you stay skilled, you offer something that nobody else is offering, you're going to get money for it. It don't matter how, it don't matter how long it takes. It might take a year. It might take a week. It might take two years, but as long as you're staying active in it, it's going to come to you. So I don't give up on, I got a bad habit of not giving up. But I also you got to. That's yeah. the worst habit to have. That's, you know, I just can't stop. Like, you know what? It makes me keep going. It's like, but I also set like huge goals for myself. Yep. But I let myself get there. Yeah, chop get it down there. little by and little. That, man, I okay. I hope somebody wrote that down. <laughs> I really do because, like, what you just said. I think if people were able to grasp that, they wouldn't give up so quick. Because, mm -hmm. like, what you just said is like. I set goals that are so big that I have to allow myself room to achieve them. Yeah. Cause like, like for me right now, like I'm starting, I'm trying to start YouTube, trying to start a podcast. My goal is for these things to support me and my family. Right. Yes. Right now I'm making zero dollars right from now. YouTube and pocket. This is free. So this far. is free content, free yes. game, just giving it away. And it's crazy right? how free this is right um, now. And like, but because my goal is so big, yeah. I know I got to keep producing content that's for free. Like I have to allow myself the space to do it. Like I couldn't post, like I posted a video last week. One of my videos, I think got like seven views. Mm -hmm. Like I couldn't be like, ah, not enough, I quit. <laughs> like, Imagine, like, no. but like, but people live their life that way. Like people really live their life that way. You only got seven views. I got seven views, I quit. Jeez. It ain't for me, YouTube maybe for other people. But like, <laughs> when you think about it though, if I wanna have a million subscribers, it starts with seven views. Start. Like, that's where it starts. Yeah. Like, you have to have seven views first. Yeah. Uh, I talked to one of my friends uh, today. Um, his name is Rick Bush. We roommates. We were roommates in college. We don't live together now. We're grown and married. He, we live apart. Good. But, <laughs> but yeah, we were roommates in college, and he's doing very well on YouTube. Matter of yeah, fact, yeah. I'm going to drop his link, and so y'all can go check him out. Him and his wife live in a tiny house, and it's, it's pretty cool. And what he was telling me was like, there's people, he, he does a lot of research. This type of person, he's, he's a lot like you. Mm -hmm. Where like, if he figures out he want to do something, he all in. Yeah. So he's researching, he's he's all in. He's yeah. always been like that. Yeah. Um, and so like, he was like, yeah, this person he, that he was looking on YouTube and they had posted videos and they was doing it for like a year and it wasn't getting traction. And then dude went to sleep and woke up with 1.4 million subscribers. Mm. And a video he posted 10 months ago, he got picked up by the algorithm and shot his shot him up. Mm. And it's like, and he and the dude was in a space where he was like, man, what am I, what am I doing that isn't working? Like I felt like I was banging my head against the wall, like I wasn't going, I wasn't going. When actually I had been did the work mm -hmm. to become successful, success just hadn't found me yet. Yo, hey, he said that? Yo, that's it right there. I mean, that's how, that's how I'm, Sheesh, bro. Because I've been acting since I was a kid, Kiddo. a child. Mm -hmm. I was doing it. And yeah. 
all of those years of growing and practicing and not necessarily pursuing it on a professional level, yeah. like, I didn't realize that I could have gotten a scholarship to go mm. to school to act. Bruh. Like, that, Bruh. that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but then I go into, you know, acting like a husband. Come you on. Know? I go into you acting tried. like a father, <laughs> and acting like a like a minister. I go into acting. So I'm acting all the time. I'm acting, you know, 24-7. You know, <laughs> and then I realized I still got a knack. I've been putting, in, I've been putting in the work. What do you say? I've been, been putting in the work. work. I've been did the work. Everybody, you know, everything just didn't catch up to me yet. But mm -hmm. no, it's like being here now, being able to wake up and go and teach, uh, and then go to rehearsal or go and read a script or get somebody, somebody sending me a script or mm -hmm. somebody's asking or offering for me to, you know, teach classes at this place. Or do, would you like to come and do your thing over here? Mm -hmm. Or would you like to partner with my company and do this? Getting these calls, these calls did not exist before I started saying yes and going towards what I really wanted to do. These calls wasn't just happening they don't just happen out of nowhere you do have to put in that time you do have to put in that that effort you got to put that energy out there because once once god know that you want something he wants what you want for yourself he yeah. wants you to have that i mean he wanted it first he's yeah, the reason you wanted it exactly yeah yeah that's yeah. been a good thing for me man yeah. putting out yeah. free content on your to speak on your part that is where we go that yeah. is that is that is where the start is because you and then you you're investing mm -hmm. you're investing in yourself you bought this, you bought this, you bought yeah. this. You kind of put yourself in a position that I got to. I got to do it. Now I, I got to quit me laying around. I got to <laughs> use it somehow. I got to I gotta make you or it's just wasting money. Yeah. I don't like wasting money. Everybody I don't mind spending money, but I don't like wasting money. I don't want to waste it. I don't want to Ain't waste. no such thing. Can't do that. Yeah. I remember when Wayne started to put out the mixtapes. Come on. Drought 2. All of them were free. Drought 3. All of them was free. Come on. Still to this gentlemen. day, they all free. Gucci did it. Man, and that's I remember what I'm Gucci saying. dropped thirty tapes in one year. This is thirty mixtapes in one in one year. The free stuff, that's and I downloaded do all of them. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, that, Chance went on to do the same thing. Yeah, you yeah. know, yeah. And it's like as actually, that, as actually, I talked about it in my last video. Mm -hmm. um, I talked about how social media is one of the greatest events for, that ever happened in Black history mm -hmm. because it removes the barriers for entry. To all these avenues, yeah. right? Like, yeah, you can be everywhere. I can do like no one can tell me that I can't speak. Yeah, because I can just record a video on top, post it, and now I'm a speaker. Like, I mean, and that is that thing where it used to be. I had to go through these companies, I had to go through these people, I had to go through these bureaucrats mm -hmm. to get to certain places. Well, no, like, uh, like, no, like Issa Rae. Yeah. Oh, you right? too. Oh my. You God. too. She was like, no, nobody could tell her that she's not a film director. Yo. Because of social media. I used to watch all of them. I know you did. When it first started. Yeah. That's crazy. And look at her. Look at her. She's, That's real. She, That's she, crazy. She, she, she's probably going to have a syndicated show. Oh, yeah. She's got, you know, uh, Insecure. Okay, yeah. So and that show like... is doing numbers. Numbers. But, the, and this, but this is what people miss. And yeah. this is what people miss about successful people. Right? Is it wasn't that she became successful when Insecure got picked up. Mm -hmm. She was already successful, and then she had an opportunity to prove it. Yeah. And that's, like, I think that's, like, the key to it, right? Yeah. Like, you have to do the work first. Because what happens, and this is what happens to people, too. That's on the flip side. is people don't do the work. Mm -hmm. They get an opportunity, and they take it. Mm -hmm. But that's their last opportunity. Eee, they messed that one up because they messed it up. Because yeah. they weren't, they're not, they're not successful. They weren't ready to be successful. <laughs> they weren't like they was just doing something. Like someone's like, "Hey, you want to do this?" Like, "Yeah, sure." Yeah. And then they blow up and like, "Well, yeah, what do I do?" Where other people is like, oh, "I've been waiting. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. I've been, I've been back. waiting for this yes. door. I've been knocking Jeez. for decades on Man. this door. As soon as I walk in, I'm home. How you doing? Hey, oh, put my picture on the wall right there. Like, I'm home." I just was waiting for them to make my key. Like, I've been ready for this yeah. moment. Tell me, how, what, how did it feel when you went from auditioning, when you went from calling people, sending emails, to when it flipped and people start calling you and sending you emails and sending you scripts? 
How how what was that process like? What, tell me tell me how that felt from when you was like when when you first picked up the phone and it was like, hey, is this Robert Earl Coppish the third? And you was like, possibly, because you know you didn't want it to be a bill collector. And they was like, well, if, if this is, I got a role for it. And you was like, it is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> tell me, tell me yeah. how that, what was that feeling like, bro? All right, so. Do you remember the first, the first time? So I remember the, I remember uh, a movie I was going to do. Uh -huh. It was called. Coach Carter's next big thing. I'm yeah. not supposed to talk about it, but I don't care. Hey, Coach Carter's next big thing. I ain't getting paid for this. Ain't nobody, no ads on this. Listen, Do your thing, bro. Listen, that you know the Joker from the the, uh -huh, the movie, uh -huh. Coach Carter. He came down to Kansas City, realized there was a lot of talent down here. Realized there was a couple filmmakers. Shout out Rob Dumas. Yeah. Um, and Morgan Cooper. Morgan so Cooper. Morgan Cooper Morgan. was the He's DP. That guy on this movie. Wow. So I go in to audition because I see it on like Facebook. I think Quaid sent it to me. He mm. was like, hey, there's an audition. There's a movie going on. I'm like, you. oh, a movie? Yeah. All right. So yeah, I yeah. Up. I already took photos, so I got a headshot. Okay. You were um, ready. Yeah, I got a resume. Mm -hmm. And um, I got some type of something ready to perform if yeah. they need me to. So yeah. I go into the audition. I'm nervous. Don't know if I'm going to get it. I don't know, you know, I know kind of what the movie's about, but not really. Though. Yeah. Um, you know, but then they said, you know, they said, yeah. So I got a part in, in the, the movie, movie. Yeah. speaking role and everything. Wow. I was really happy about that. I remember. I'm, I'm, I'm right next to you doing yeah. this process. Oh, okay. We're okay. talking about it. I remember, bro. I was real happy. I yeah. I was, I was, I was done happy. I thought I, I was said, what? Cool. Who? Where? We made it. Have I showed you? I seen a little bit of it. Uh, because it's actually yeah i know okay i know um but anyways so I we talked about that that too yeah <laughs> we talked about that too <laughs> so um you know the audition process is always uh one that makes me go like gee you either want me or you don't yes. like, i don't <laughs> i don't know why i'm auditioning yeah, like either you I'm, know who i either am i fit into it or i do not yeah. fit into it and i'm okay with that. either way because me i'm a content creator mm -hmm. I, I will make my own scripts yep. i will film my own things yep. i will come so up I, with my i don't really stuff. need you but we could use each other yes <laughs> yeah if you know you are <laughs> But I don't want to be playing these games. <laughs> He's back and forth. Yeah, like, yeah. who else doing that? I don't know. Yeah. Everybody does it. I mean, it's a natural thing with acting. <laughs> well, when I did start getting them calls or emails mm -hmm. about actually somebody's like, hey, I want you. For this role. Specifically. I wrote this, this role, and you're the first person I came to. Yes. Wow. And we want to pay you a few. Come on. A few grand pull, for it. Pull a, pull a money in your you pocket. You know, we want to do that, and we want you. We need you to do mm. it. I'm like, yo. This is, what do you call it? The natural progression of things. This is Come what on. I expected. This you is, be talking like you read books or something. I read a couple Come on, books, man. man. I do. That, no, I like that. I like that, man. That is, that is what I expect. Mm -hmm. I wanted this. And then I, when I did get those other opportunities, I said yes, and I fulfilled them. Yep. The Bible talks about yep. how the person who got five talents is going to get five more. Mm -hmm. I'm only doing this because I like how my hands look in the camera. Hey. You got five <laughs> talents, you're going to get five you more. You look like you could palm a basketball. <laughs> You know, you know, I used to. You look like you do a I little. Used to. <laughs> That's, so, oh, this is funny. I just ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Ah. I was listening. I kept on stage. Yeah. And like, my guy. He, yeah, I yeah, watch him yeah. all the time. Bro. Yes. He was saying, like, he played ball all his whole life because uh -huh. he thought he was going to the NBA. <laughs> and he said he didn't realize he wasn't going to the NBA. <laughs> so he graduated from high school. He went to a. He was about to graduate. He was trying to. He went to a D3 tryout. Ooh. In, in Washington, <laughs> and he said he got crossed so bad oh. at the D3 trial oh. that he quit basketball. Okay. And he was like, I wish I could have all those hours back <laughs> where I was practicing basketball. If I would have known, Bro. then what I do now. <laughs> He did it right though. Yeah. Because he learned he how saw to it through. He learned yeah. how to Yeah, yeah. You know. Well, I just thought that was hilarious. No, that bro. is hilarious. Because he was like, bro, he said, dude, drop me. Cause and at the D three trial. And he said, I thought I was an NBA player. He's, he played J V all of high school. <laughs> He was a joke back then. Bro, for real though. That's hilarious. Yeah, like, so no, so I, I, that made me think about that. But. I, I, I uh, had a little basketball time. You had some but okay. I had that moment too you when did. I was what, like, what, you know what? What was your moment? My moment was I was at a basketball practice with a team called the Running Rebels. Uh huh. And, with um, Al. Yeah, with Coach yeah. Al. Uh -huh. And we had a bunch of just 
great players. Yeah, some dogs team. on the running rubbers. And so I'm training with, I'm getting better with, I'm learning and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But there was one moment in practice when it, when he asked everybody, all right, so who's planning on playing collegiate basketball? And they all raised their hands, and I'm like, mm. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's not what I was doing with this. I'm, I'm just having fun. Yeah. So y'all not, not here for fun? <laughs> this ain't for team camaraderie. And he asked again so that I would have. So hey, you would raise your hand too? He's like, uh, everybody but Oh, he didn't hear me. Who here <laughs> is planning on playing college basketball? And I, <laughs> <laughs> he pointed <to> you. <laughs> you, right? Yeah, man. <laughs> so I was just like, you know, I like, I feel freshman year, I think. Okay. So I was like, you know. I remember because like, you played eighth grade. Yeah. Then that and was, then you I was didn't done. even come out freshman year. No. So this happened in between that. I was like, you know what? I think that um, I think that uh, I want to get out of the way for these guys. For, yeah. Because like, this thing, I'm just having fun. Because I would hate if I was passionate about something. <laughs> and somebody who wasn't was taking my like, spot. Oh you? my god. You start every eighth basketball. But, you know that but, that comes from a limited yeah, yeah, mindset. You yeah. think that there's not enough for yep, everybody. But it you is think enough. That, man, it is it's enough. so crazy. It was so much. It was like was so I, I thought I would be getting like uh, what's that Kendrick Lamar so song, uh, Black Boy Fly, mm -hmm. when it's like I thought that he would be the last one out the hood. Like I mm. thought that. So I didn't want to be, you know, in your way for your basketball yeah. scholarship if you know because I could have went. I got that type of drive. I got yeah. that type of confidence. I got that. Yeah. Type. And then you everybody, the work in. everybody who I grew up with was playing ball. They went and played like, college when, ball. When, I, when we talk and we be, and you be talking about all the people you be playing that you grew up playing with, I be like, bro, like you was supposed to be good. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like you was supposed to be good. You're supposed to be. But you was like, nah, that ain't for me. Yeah. For real, for real. For real. And they for real, for real. <laughs> it was for real. So I'm gonna for real, for real go over here. <laughs> so I started an actor. And then, I got you. But that's the thing about. Me, my passion with this, it's mm -hmm. like I feel I, I felt fulfilled before I even started getting Come on, those man. phone calls. I because felt, you were doing what you were supposed to be doing. Exactly. Like, and I feel that. Like, I feel that for real, for real. Like, I know, like, for me, I tell people all the time, like, it don't matter what you're doing. If you're in purpose, you're going to be all right. Because at the end of the day, money is not a real thing. No. It's not. Like, it's, <laughs> like, people, and I be trying to get my, my, the young people I'm around to understand it. Like, you don't need money. Yeah. You need the things money can get you. Yes. But you don't need money. No. If there was a way for you to get to the things without money, then you would do that. Yes. And people just, they just want to get, people want to give you money. They do. If you really people, step on. A lot of people on, have too many, too much. If you want it. Buddy, really, actually, you would find out the ways to just let money come to you because it'll, it'll come to you. this. People was paying this man eighty dollars to write love messages on potatoes, literally on a potato. He hey, was writing that. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yes, if you want, you can always make money. <laughs> like, dude, like, and that and that's a business. This ain't, this ain't something like his home people. Like right. people are. Going to his website, buying, right, typing in this is the, the message they yes. want, yes. the address they want to send to, and linking their credit card yes. to pay this man. Speaking of that, I said I wanted to be a writer mm -hmm. a couple years ago. Yeah, I was able to write one of my first plays this past summer and have kids perform it. I remember it was a yeah, you can't go. It was dope. It was a beautiful like, thing. When, when I walked into the practice, I was like. It's a meme like when that moment when you realize you are where you prayed to be. Mm -hmm. And so when I walked in and yeah. saw you teaching, yeah, man. I was like, wow, we prayed for this. Yes. Like me and you specifically. Yes. I was like, hey, bro, what you want to do? Let's pray. Like we sat down yes. and we prayed for these things. Yes. And when I walked <laughs> in and saw you, I said, man, if God ain't real. Hey. Like, it's, it's, I don't care it's... what y'all talking about. <laughs> I don't care. Like, I don't care what y'all talking about. Like, God has to be personal. So, like, yeah. he can't just be They're out there you. and yeah. just listlessly. No, like, He's it has honest. to be. He has to hear us. He's connected and hearing. He him. has to hear us yeah. to be like, my my son, my child wants this. He don't even know. I'm working stuff out so you can meet the right people. Mm -hmm. And so five years from now, you can be doing exactly what you prayed for. Man, the prayers. It's like. Is is really beyond 
sometimes what I can even like yeah. express because yeah. it's just it's really it's really just really beautiful. Mm -hmm. But a few years ago, when I had wanted to start storytelling and I wanted yeah. to start writing and I wanted to start all of these things, yeah. I started to, to write Mother's Day cards and Father's Day wow. cards. Wow, I didn't even know that. So I wow. started to write them because my mom had told me about this um, this uh, website called Fiverr. Yeah, um, yeah. And she was like, you can sell da 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 da. So I'm like, okay. She had told me about it a long time, mm -hmm. but I ain't never, I ain't yeah, care. But then I was like, okay. Maybe I can do something that nobody else is doing. Maybe I'll write some Mother's Day cards or Father's Day cards, you know, for people who are lazy, <laughs> you know, or don't want to go out and go to and, the store. Yeah, or don't want yeah. something that everybody else got. Yeah, they want something unique. Specific. So I had a, them fill out like a little survey to wow. tell me. I didn't know you did this. Yeah, man, I did it on Fiverr. I did it. I did not know that. And so I, I had them, you know, put in specific things that they might want included. Just stuff about their mom or stuff about their dad or whatever, whatever. So I got them, you know, and then I actually wrote them things out. Wow. Um, then I actually sent it to them. Um, and I got paid to, to, to make a poem. That's crazy. About somebody else's mama. That's crazy. You know, and those types of things. That's it's like, crazy. It's small wins. Yes. Because the five is like, not a lot of money every time. No, it's like five, ten bucks. Yeah, but you're getting paid to do what you love to do. I was able to write some wow. words and then get some money. Wow. Just like high school all over again. <laughs> like, just, I'm writing words and getting money. Okay, well, that's, I mean, but except those, like you were saying, those small wins, they really matter. You got to appreciate them. And like, and I think that's the key, like, appreciating them. Like, you, when you said you wanted to be a writer, you were thinking, I'm just, I'm just assuming, you were thinking Hollywood films. Yes. TV, TV shows, shows, yes. Right. But as soon as the people sent you the money to write the car, you were a writer. <laughs> That's true. Right, right. Right then and there. That at that moment, you are a professional writer. Yeah. And like, but if you miss that, you might quit and never make it. True enough. You know what I'm saying? Like, no. If you if you're not grateful in that moment, like you're like, oh, man, this ain't. This ain't what I want. Man. You could miss that, right? I did a play written by one of my students, Gary Enrique, Bradley Lopez. Oh, wow. I did a play for Gary up at KCKCC. Yeah. And oh, we, okay, because he's at UMKC now. It was when he was He there. was at okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So how it happened was I was at a table read for this movie, mm -hmm. and the movie is horrible. <laughs> um, I'm not even going to mention that movie. So, I'm going to show you later. Okay, but okay. I did this movie don't exist but at the table read for this movie that don't exist there was, and this ain't coach carter either so at the table read for this movie that don't exist there was this young lady and she was like fishing she was like man i got this script i got this play but i don't got no actors i need actors so she's doing this at the table she keep on saying this at the table read for another movie yes she keep on asking around so I'm like, girl, okay, what's up? Like, I'll, I'll, All right, man. I'm, Cause you just tired of hearing him talk. Yeah, you don't even know who I am. You should be thankful that I'm saying yes to this right now, you know. But she's like acting. She kind of playing me off to be she acting bougie. Yeah, like mm, I don't want jail. Okay, I'm well. talking to the other actors. <laughs> So I'm like, girl, look, ain't nobody else gonna say yes. <laughs> I'm all you got. I'm I'm make sure that I'm all you got. Then she told me who else was working on the play with her, mm -hmm. and I knew Gary, okay. and I also knew the other guy who was in it. Okay. And I, she was like, he was acting like weird or whatever about mm -hmm. the play, not taking it serious. Yeah. And the play, you know, it was written like a USD 500 student. Mm. I'm gonna just say it like that. I, we're we're here, you know. We're and, here. Um, if you ain't, if you. And if you don't know, then you don't know. But if yeah, you no. know, you know. That's something that's done like on social media. <laughs> I see, I snuck that in there. All right, go ahead, man, go ahead. So the script was written like that. We had these rehearsals up at KCKCC, and it was, I had to do it for free, and it was like a three-day show. Mm -hmm. So every day was like, you know. But I was excited mm -hmm. about being in it, acting, yeah. being on stage, yeah. working with the crew. I was excited about it. I was happy about it. I appreciated it. I was grateful for it. I gave my all. Mm -hmm. When I was there, when I was rehearsing, I gave my all. When I was at home looking over my lines, I was memorizing as if it was written by Ava DuVernay herself. Mm -hmm. um, because when you come in with that type of integrity, you come in with that type mm -hmm. of passion for it, God only honors that. Yeah. Like what I was saying about the five and five, you give 
you know, yeah. you got what you got. And if you give what you got, then you're going to get more yeah. every single time. Yeah. So after that play was over, I started getting calls like almost immediately to do more films mm. um, and to wow. do more stage plays. Wow. And I literally have not stopped since then. Wow. Um, wow. But that was the for real like start for me. That to was be a like, domino. Oh, yeah. Because then you start getting calls from people like Morgan Cooper. Mm -hmm. And he's just like, hey. You my guy. What's up? You trying to get in on this? Mm -hmm. You want to get in on this? Like, <laughs> like if, if right. I was gonna say like, no, like not, no, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> so this is when we're gonna do it. So you come early. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I mean, that's literally yeah. how it is. Like that's no exaggeration. Yeah. So I mean, it's just a beautiful. It's this is beautiful. I'm ready to ride. That's it. I'm I'm enjoying the ride. I'm enjoying the journey. I don't know everything. I don't got everything figured out. Um, everything is not perfected. But when you see me on stage. You ain't gonna know that. Yeah. Like you are gonna think you've that been doing this forever. You gonna you think know. that I'm not me. Come on. I mean that's how it is. And, I, and I've seen you. Stage. I've seen you play some roles, and I'll be like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't like that. Bring my friend back. You gonna take think him away? <laughs> you gonna think it's like, not me? As people who aren't actors, like people who don't are like are not in theater at all. We really be mad at people yes. for their roles. Oh they yes, play. if like, somebody do it right, like we really be mad at them. Like, Bruh. like I don't like you. Cause don't nobody... like why? Cause on Baby Boy. Exactly. <laughs> hey, you see, do you watch Power? You probably don't watch no. Power. Okay. But I know people really hate that one dude. Like, he got death threats. Like I was reading about it on uh, on uh, Twitter. Yep. I was on Twitter and it was like people really hate him. Yes, and, they and like they don't know it's him. Irritating. <laughs> but see, that's the thing. It's like, yo, this this guy, he's he's doing that work. He's he, he he playing his role, playing his tail off, playing it incredibly. I mean, and there are, there are some actors and actresses out there that have certain roles, like you, like yeah, mm -hmm. like um the dude from uh, what's the church show on Netflix? Uh, Green Greenleaf. Greenleaf, the pastor. Yes, he is always a crooked pastor in everything he's in. Yes. He so when I see him, I'm like. Mm. I don't even. Mm. Hey, listen, mm. I ain't stand for this. Yeah, I'm like, mm. <laughs> I don't even want to watch this because I know this is gonna be some foolishness because of him. And he plays but that. He does, and then, and and then, but people know. Yeah, I need somebody. Hey, right, bro, you Who, feel like stealing some money from a church? Who's the uh, black yeah. mama of Hollywood? Um, <laughs> the uh, I know exactly who you talking about. Uh, Loretta Devine. Yes. See, everybody's mama. Everybody's mama. And you know, I think that for real, that's such a blessing. It is. I am the type of person that I could literally probably do. A lot, you want to do a lot, of different, a lot of different roles. But if I could, if there was. If it was a niche? Yeah, if you there was. Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Hey, we need a Robert Kopijusk type of thing. <laughs> oh, me. <laughs> Yeah. Sign me up. I could do that. I, you know, I just did it uh, last month, but I don't have time. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree. Yeah. So uh, I think you dropped some gems. I want to ask you some Black History Month specific questions. Okay. So uh, if you could give me just one person, I know there's a lot, mm -hmm. but what's, who's one person throughout Black History? They could be living or alive, living or alive, mm -hmm. the same thing. They could be dead or alive mm -hmm. uh, that you look up to um, and that has meant something to you. Okay. Um, so here in the recent time, I say Lorraine Hansberry right now. Okay, so a lot of people heard that name and it was like nothing. Mm -hmm. Like it was like they don't Jamal know. Adams, like okay. nothing. Lorraine so, Hansberry. Talk to she is a writer. Mm -hmm. Um she actually wrote Raising in the Sun. Hey. Um and she was the first African American woman to have a Broadway show. Come on now. And it was wow. Raising in the Sun, starring wow. Sidney Poitier. Wow. And so it's like, oh, and him. So okay. he couldn't even read. Uh, even when hold he on, started. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. They gave him scripts, and he was like, nothing. There were no scripts. So he. Oh, it was just. You would, they would, they would you. teach you the lyrics by, no, by, he, by ear? He started this acting career because. It's so complicated. It's so much to it. Come man. on, come on. I'm I got time. I got nowhere to go. He started this acting career off of 
somebody insulting his ability to be able to speak proper English because you know he's not from here. He's from like they they where is France? It? Either mm-hmm. either Haiti or Barbados. Oh one oh, them, he's like island. That. He's an yeah, island. Yeah, yeah. I know that. Okay. And so he so he didn't. So they were talking about his accent. It. Yeah, and it was so thick, and he wasn't speaking English right, and he couldn't read it right. Wow. And so um, he like. Somebody told him he was trying to look for a job or something mm-hmm. like that. And one of the things was acting. And he went in to try to act and he couldn't. He was like stumbling over the words. The director was like, okay, stop. You're wasting my time. Get All you can do is wash dishes somewhere. Which is crazy because that was his former job. What? He was actually. People be talking stuff to you and they be hitting you. You're like, you don't even know how much that hurts my feelings. <laughs> so. Got you. So he, was, he dedicated he took that as a challenge. He dedicated himself to go read. Because he said, you know what? Yeah. I am a dishwasher, but I don't, won't always be. <laughs> but you are right today, but you won't always be. So, and he, what he started out doing was taking uh, jobs around theaters that he could, mm. even if it was taking out the trash. Mm. Like, they didn't even, he wasn't good at acting at all. Wow. Like, they was clowning on him. Wow. And he knew he wasn't good, but, you know, he could but, do but something about it. Yeah. And he worked on it and then ended up doing a couple of shows, ended up being the star oh, on this Broadway so, play wow. for Lorraine Hansberry, which wow. back to her, she uh, passed in her early 30s, mid 30s. Oh, uh, I know, right? That'd be crazy. And it's like right after she had so much success, success. Wow. and they went on to make, they went on to make a movie about mm-hmm. it. And Diddy did a play. I mean, eventually he did it on Broadway and then they made the movie about yeah. it, you know, but Lorraine Hansberry, she is, you wow. know, her writing, if you, as many times I've been able to go over the script now, um, just, I mean, even the phrase to be young, gifted, and black, like, she, like that's her. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So, like, this is. And she was saying that, what? And this is the 30s? Bruh, this is, the yeah, 40s? this is like the 50s. Yeah, gifted, oh, okay, yeah, 50s. Yeah. Okay, okay. And, um, you know, it's like to see her genius, mm. to see her, you know, her expressing these words on this page and telling the story yeah. of an experience. And then to have that type of experience with dignity. Mm. Like black people get to play something with dignity. Mm. Um, they're not a sidekick. They're not, like, this is the not family. Minstrels. Yeah, like, yeah. they're actually, you know, they got some struggles or whatever, but... But that's real life. Yeah, that's that's just their life. And they're being able to play their life with some humanity wow. to it. So that's, this this play, this show... It's kind of, is it... Gives me a new deeper to, appreciation? For Lorraine Hansberry, okay. definitely. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. That's cool. Um, and then... What what is uh, being black to you? Like, why is that important to you? Hmm. Like, why is it important that I'm black? Yeah. Um, well, I guess in in our society and how it's structured, uh, it, your impact can be greater felt just from being black. Mm-hmm. Um, just because there are so many things attached to black and blackness and you know all of those all of those concepts it's like being black just it is more than if you will yeah if there was a less than black would be the more More than than. and and it's like like me being black i like that me being black has, has given me so many different blessings just so many different ways to see things so many different ways to understand things so many different people that i come in a contact with the way that they come towards me or talk to me or whatever interact with me those things come because i'm black and Mm. those things shape my experience and shape you know the way i think about things so it's like Mm. it's been a beautiful thing for me man i really wouldn't Mm. trade that for nothing no i mean there's nothing else that i want to be i really enjoy my blackness too bro being black i feel that having a sense of myself having a sense of who we are how powerful we are as a collective Mm-hmm. independently whatever i mean we're just really magnificent god really loves us he really has favor okay. on our lives and i can tell that just by who we are what do we do we run faster dress flyer <laughs> jump on. higher I'm, i mean uh, like, yeah. on my last episode i was like man i like being black because i can dance i like being black because i can rap <laughs> it's that easy. i can i can i can sing i can play basketball i like these are things that are just because i'm black like i like it um and people are so impressed and people are so impressed with things that i just do without thinking like yes. Yeah, I, I I like that. That's a good. I like the being. I like being black is more than. Yeah. I like that. I think that 
That's a that's a shirt. Do you remember my other shirt? Yeah. All white being black. You have a lot of ideas that I'm sad about. You know, don't be sad. I am, but I understand where they're going. I understand what you have to do. Fund them. That's don't right. be sad. <laughs> Send money to the cash app. Cash app. Dollar sign B O B B E H C. Dollar sign B O B B E A C. You are gonna see that at the bottom of the screen now. <laughs> I'm gonna find a way. I'm gonna find under. That's what we record early. I'm working. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get good at this, bro. I promise. I'm gonna get good at this. So, I have a. So, uh, just the last thing before I let you go. All right. Uh, I have a top five worst things ever happened to black people list. Okay. I'm gonna name them in order from five to one. Okay. And I want you to. You can take one thing away mm -hmm. and add something. Okay. Okay. So number five is slavery. Mm -hmm. It sucked. Mm -hmm. uh, number four, welfare. And food stamps. I think they suck. Okay. Um, and I think they suck because they try to take the man out the household. You and say welfare, food well, stamps. That's four. That's slavery. Like, so five, slavery's five. Welfare. Oh, okay, stamps okay. Is it's four. all the same. Okay. Yeah, welfare slash food stamps is four. Gotcha. Um, and because I, I think it limits people's creativity. Okay. Because basically, welfare is like you're not creative enough to go make enough money. Yeah. Okay. Let me do it for you. Yeah, let me do it for you. Um, three is bubble coats. Um, okay. I think that's a horrible worst invention. Thing that Third worst thing to ever have black people. Okay. Um, <laughs> number two is rims. Rims. Um, wow. Yes, okay. Rims. Because I feel like black people have spent more money on rims mm -hmm. than anything else in the last 20 years. Okay. Um, and then the number one worst thing, and you might hate me for this one, ever happened to black people? Soldier Boy. Uh, <laughs> because wow. Soldier Boy figured out wow. how to trick the internet into liking you when you're not good. Like, Soulja Boy figured that out. Yo. And he broke the, he broke the call, he broke the internet. Yo. Soulja Boy is the king of the internet, but for bad reasons. <laughs> so, you don't wanna put me and on I Soulja, love Soulja Boy. Boy. That's, it hurt me to say it. And how you going? This is why. Soulja Boy figured out that when people listen to music, specifically rap music, that as much as purists and lyricists- Listen, Skip Pop. I think you're wrong. <laughs> So talk to me, man. <laughs> I, I knew which one you was gonna take off the list before I started. So who you what you taking off the list? Jeez, I don't even know. Look, man. There's so many Your bad things on the list. So <laughs> complicated, G. Um, I put more in. Five <laughs> worst things. So I uh, I mean, All right, I, so I, let I, me go can... back through for me. Yeah. Alright, so number five for slave. Uh-huh. Food stamps and government assistance. Yep. Bubble coats. Yep. <laughs> um, rims. Rims and soldier boy. Yeah. Worst things. I think that um, so I, I'll make it easy. You can just, if you can take some off, you can take some off. But you can give me two things that you want to add. <laughs> Listen, man, I I don't know. I mean, like, I'm gonna just flip it all around okay. for you. And all five of these are five of the best things <laughs> to happen to black people. All five of them. Yes, slavery, government assistance, bubble coats. Rims, Soldier Boy. Without Soldier Boy, there would be no Drake. That's Let's just true, start there. But I'm okay with that. Okay, so no, no, <laughs> I'm we, okay need, with we need God's I'm plan. Okay. We need God's plan. <laughs> um, and and I'm gonna defend this because some people might be looking at me crazy, like, oh no, slavery was home. No, because no. he got us here. It, listen, okay. <laughs> A couple people got hurt. Okay. But this is why I can only have him on once every six months. But you this is why I can only have him on twice a year. Bye, Ashley. I'm not saying slavery was a choice. I'm not Kanye. Okay. I'm saying that slavery. Ultimately, we are blessed. In <laughs> spite. Okay. There we go. In spite. In spite of. of you know. So it couldn't be. Yeah, I it's got not, you. It's not, so slavery I, wasn't the only way we could so, have been blessed. I, so I. So slavery. But we took it and we flipped it. In and of itself wasn't necessarily positive. Right. But the fact that we have been here and have been able to profit from yeah. being here, yeah. we can see now, slavery in the whole now, as, okay. There are some who argue that no good <laughs> has ever come from slavery. And I can 100% okay. understand. Yeah. But you're just I taking can. a different stand. I just feel like. I, I don't disagree. For some people. You know, we still got a chance of getting reparations. You're dead. It's um, on the table. It's there. People are talking at least about it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, slavery. Uh, yep. <laughs> what you know? Yep. Okay. And, um, <laughs> it's the bubble coats. Uh huh. 
We need them. We don't know. We East don't. Coast B. We don't. Uh, what about the bubble coat vest? That's, that's just the worst. The vest. That's the no worst sleeves. with no sleeves. It serves no purpose. <laughs> like, you have on a bubble vest. You're still cold. Like, what? Anything that I would want to add to the worst list? Because those are great. Those are great. Things. Okay. Thank okay. you. I appreciate that. Uh, I appreciate it. God, you know what you're doing. Because <laughs> um, if, if slavery wasn't supposed to happen, we wouldn't have happened. God would have ended. You're right. You're real right, quick. You're right. You're right. And instead, he let 500 years happen. Um, I don't know. Hey, you know. God I just a lot more patient. That, <laughs> I was like, ah. Jeez, nah. I wouldn't have made it that long. <laughs> but um, two things you got to add. Mm -hmm. And one of them is a byproduct of slavery, uh -huh. I believe. Fried chicken. Okay, yeah. Fried hey, chicken. That's an honorable mention. That's an honorable mention because it's, like, it's killing people. It is. To this day, left and right. It is. Then uh, another thing, Easy E. <laughs> <laughs> so, my favorite Easy E moment, right, is in his song where he said, Ice Cube, write the rhyme that I say. He said that in a song and people rapped it back <laughs> and still liked him. <laughs> Like that is crazy to me. I think we could have did without. Oh, we could have. We could have. We could have. Um, we could have. Hip hop. Because we could. If we would have just got Q, we'd yeah. have been okay. Yeah. We didn't need him at all. You know. We didn't like. We would have got Cuban Dre. Like that's it. We don't need N.W.A. for Cuban Dre. Yeah. Yeah. Because like for me, that's their worst moments. <laughs> like after we were so much better. You know, a lot of people love. In they WA, do. They do. Like we are not people. one of them. No, I'm not, you know? I, I, just, I am in 100% agreement. I feel like in WA, um, you know, they said things. <laughs> and, and the way that they did things. They, they said some things. You know, <laughs> the way that they, it was very creative. You know, great shock value and whatnot. Man, um, 100% great, great value. messages. But at the same time, no. it kind of... Um, it glorifies something. It, and it perpetuated it a couple did. of things. It did, know? man. It made some of those things we still trying to get we out of. We still are dealing you know? with And it's not necessarily that it was their fault. No, it's but they fault. just profited we from it. We can actually go back and blame slavery again for all we of could. this. Because policemen. Yeah, and all that. You know, but uh, yeah. there was some liquor things with them. Come on. You know, selling crack. Uh, yeah. <laughs> calling women. A lot of things. These things. A lot of things. I mean, other than women. I'm no prude. I'm just, right. <laughs> you just you have just you know. If we, if I, it, if I don't mind some bad things that happen. To, I don't mind to black people. I don't mind it. I like I like those two additions. <laughs> I, I honestly could not have thought of those myself, and I'm so glad that I had a genius like yourself on the hey, show man, today. I appreciate to it. think about. Thanks that. for asking me the worst things that have happened <laughs> think, to black people during think, Black History I think Month. We gotta take we gotta take account. Thank we gotta you. take account. Like they say, <laughs> if you don't know the past. You will repeat it. So we got to know what was holding us back You're right. so that we can move forward. You're right. All right. I'm, so I, I, I appreciate that. I like that. I love that. Thanks for having me on um, Black History. I want, before we get out of here, I want you to drop one more time your socials. Um, and then I'm, I'm going to leave links in the descriptions for uh, for the for Raising in the Sun so okay. they can get their tickets. Um, this might have to be a two-episode. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hey, it might. Like... Listen, I can, chop both of these I can up guarantee there. this that because you can't just leave out all that good stuff. You, can't. you will, it will not be six months again before I have you back on. Oh, cool. That, that I can guarantee. I'm down with it. All right, so drop your socials before we get out of here. B O B B E H C Bobby C Traster Trey T R E Y S T E R underscore T R E. I think that's how you spell it. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, I just, hey, I, mean, I just me tagged you in the yeah. other one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, you know who I am. I'm Young Strick, and I have the privilege of hosting The Ladder. You can find us on wherever you get your podcasts from, Google Podcasts, Anchor, Pocket Cast, The Breaker, uh, Spotify, uh, Radio Public. A podcast is up on there. It's just audio. And if you, on YouTube, thank you, because I love that you're watching it. You have some time in your day, and I appreciate that, because you could be watching a whole bunch of other stuff. Mm -hmm. So if you like it, hit thumbs up. If you love it, hit subscribe. And if you want more, hit that bell. Turn the notifications on. Uh, it's been a great, great episode with my guy. Drink up! And uh, this is the this is the guy behind the intro. That's my song. So ah, that's yeah. his song. Courage is his son. Yes. And Wind Out is our city. Um, also, merch alert. Hey. Wind Out Rage. 
KCK Legends, local black business. I want you to go support. Their website will be in the description. They got tons of stuff, hats, shirts, uh, just yeah. everything that you could ever want to rep your city. Um, I love them. I know them personally. They dope, and everything they have is dope. I love you, and we out.